Welcome to Electron Line. To take the mystery out of the transfer function and how to find the poles and the zeros and how to graph the transfer function, let's try that. Let's take the one that we're not familiar with that we showed you on the last uh, video on how we obtained that particular transfer function. Notice we had the output current, we had the source current, this was the transfer function. Notice that the transfer function is the definition of the output current over the input current and notice we end up with that and then if we replace uh, what we call j omega with s we have a simplified transfer equation like that that we could easily solve for zeros in the numerator and zeros in the denominator we found that when s equals zero or in other words j omega equals zero or s equals negative two in the numerator we get a zero there so there's two zeros one for s equals zero one for s equals negative two and then we also found that we had poles at s equals j omega, which is negative 1. And notice that if we solve for omega out of the j omega being equal to negative 1, we simply divide both sides by j. So we have omega equals negative 1 over j. Multiply both the top and the bottom by j. And omega will be, become j times 1. Or here, omega will become j times 2. So now we can already plot some of these points. Here we have a graph where on the vertical axis we have the transfer function as a function of omega. Notice when omega is equal to zero, we had a, a zero. We had omega equals to two, we had a zero. And when omega equals to one, we had an, an asymptote there because we found that the transfer function became infinite at that. So if we now find or evaluate the transfer function for various values, we can actually plot those points. So let's do one point right here. If omega is equal to j1, that's what we got from here, we already know that's going to give us a pole. But all I'm doing here is I'm taking my transfer function and every omega is going to become a j1. This omega is going to become a j1, this omega is going to become a j1, and this omega is going to become a j1. Now, j times j is a negative 1, so we get negative 1. j times j is negative 1, so we get 2 plus negative 1. In the denominator, we get 1 plus j times j is negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. And j times j is a negative 1, but since we square it, we get a positive 1. If we add everything in the numerator, we get 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 in the numerator, and the denominator becomes 0. Anything divided by 0 becomes infinite, so that's why we know we have a pole there. But notice the numerator is negative. That might give us some indication of what the graph is going to look like. So at least that's where the asymptote is. Now let's evaluate the transfer function for j uh, for omega equals 0.5j, for omega equals 1.5j, and for omega equals 3. So we're going to get two more points, uh, three more points, one at 0 0.5, another point at 1.5, and a point at 3 and see what the transfer function looks like. And again, we do this just to gain more understanding of what transfer functions are and how to deal with them. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We have our equation right here, so every omega is now going to be replaced by 0.5j. So that means that this is going to be equal to j times omega, which is equal to 0.5j. I know I've got that reversed, but it looks a little bit better that way times 2 plus j omega, that would be j times 0 0.5 times j in the numerator, in the denominator, that gives us a 1 plus a j times 2, and omega is going to be j times 0 0.5, and then in the last part we have plus, here we have j times omega, and that would be times j times 0 0.5 quantity squared. So what does that become? j times j is negative uh, 1 times 0 0.5, that's negative 0 0.5, times 2 plus j times j, that would be um, negative 1 times 0 0.5, that minus 0 0.5 in the numerator, divided by, here we get 1, j times j, that would be negative 1 times 1, that would be negative 1, and here we get j times j, that's negative 1 times 0 0.5, that's negative 0 0.5 squared is plus 0 0.25. So notice that in the numerator we get uh, 1.5 times a negative 0 0.5, that's minus 0 0.75 times 3, uh, times 4, because this is 0, 
I'm doing a little bit of arithmetic in my head. Sometimes you just want to grab a calculator. So notice that uh, this becomes 0.5 divided by 0.25 is 2. 2 times 1.5 is 3. And uh, we have a negative that would be minus 3. So when we evaluate the transfer function when omega is equal to 0.5j, we get negative 3. So that's right here, a negative 3. Let's say that's right here, negative 3. That gives me a point right there. Okay, what about when omega is j 1.5? So here we get j times j 1.5 times 2 plus j times j 1.5 all divided by 1 plus j 2 times j 1.5 plus the quantity j times j 1.5 quantity squared. Let's see what that equals. Okay, so we have uh, j times j, negative 1, so that's uh, negative 1.5 times 2, that would be minus 3, because that's uh, negative 1 times 3. In the denominator, we end up with 1. Uh, j times j is negative 1, that would be minus 3. j times j, negative 1 times 1.5 squared, that's plus 2.25. Oh, okay, I got this wrong. This is minus 1.5. Okay, it's 0.5 times this is 0.75 times 4 is 3 again, minus 3. All right, so that's a minus 3. So when the omega is 1.5, I have another point at minus 3. So notice that here the graph looks kind of like this. And, uh, okay, like that. So we have a funnel like here. You can see that this goes to negative infinity as we approach omega equals 1. And then finally, we're going to do it one more time when omega equals j3. So that gives us j times j3 times 2 plus j times j3 all divided by 1 plus j2 times j3 plus j times j3 quantity squared. All right. In the numerator, that gives us a negative 3 times uh, 2. This is a negative 3 plus 2. That's a negative 1. All divided by, in the denominator, we get 1 plus. That's negative 1 times 6. That's, uh, that's a negative 6. And then here we get uh, j times j. That's negative 1 times 3. But squared, that's plus 9 equals. In the numerator, we get 3 divided by 10 minus 6. That would be 4 or 3 quarters. So here, when we get to 3, when omega is equal to 3, the value, let's say if this is equal to 1, then 3 quarters would be right there. So notice that would be point right there. So you see that the curve, let me try to draw the curve a little bit better. So that looks like this. And there's my other point right there. So notice, here we have a graphical representation of the transfer function. It is 0 for omega 0. Then it goes to negative infinity when omega is 1. It goes back to 0 when omega is 2. When omega is 3, we have a transfer function equal to 3 quarters. And again, the transfer function represents the ratio of the output current over the input current. So you can see that, that it will be 0 on the output current, negative infinity, back to 0, 3 quarters the input current when omega equals 3. And so you can see that you can actually evaluate any transfer function for any value, just like in an algebraic sense, to graphically represent what the transfer function looks like. Now later on, we're going to get a better way of actually drawing these transfer functions graphically when we use the boat plots. But that comes later. At least you now have a good idea of what that looks like. And that is how it's done.